Getting up and getting dressed in the morning is something most of us take for granted. But for some, particularly people with disabilities, dressing oneself is more of a chore. It can be an ordeal made more difficult by a lack of clothing options to choose from. There are people working on solutions to make the simple act of putting on clothes, and fashionable clothes at that, accessible to everyone. NewsHour Weekend's Megan Thompson has this story. Every morning, Christina Mallon picks out an outfit for her job at a marketing firm in New York. Mallon loves fashion and wants to look her best, but deciding what to wear isn't the biggest issue. For the last eight years, slowly, both my arms and shoulders became paralyzed. They don't exactly know what I have. They think it's motor neuron disease, most similar to ALS. When Mallon's muscles began to atrophy, her old clothes no longer fit or became too difficult for her to put on by herself. Fashion is a way to express your soul and your personality. So, and me being a fashionista since I was a child, it was very difficult that I couldn't wear my remaining clothing because I felt like a part of my identity was dying. Malin went online and looked at clothes designed for people with a disability, but what she found was disappointing. It was these really bold colors that I would never wear, a lot of fleeces, nothing fitted, a lot of Velcro, and that just wasn't me. It just made me really upset that I didn't even want to go out of the house. Then, last year, Malin found someone who could help. Our mission has always been to make style accessible. Grace and Jun leads more, Open Style Lab, a nonprofit based at the Parsons School of Design in New York, one of the nation's premier fashion institutes. The lab runs a summer program that trains participants to create clothing that is inclusive and accessible. One out of five people identify having a disability in the United States, which means there's a whole untapped market um, that's marginalized and haven't been addressed. Open Style Lab is funded by foundation grants and donations from companies including Polar Tech and Walmart. The participants are students and professional designers, engineers, and occupational and physical therapists. Christina Mallon's team made her a stylish coat free of charge. Being able to put a coat on by myself was the difference between me having enough confidence to go to work. And things like that have such a big impact that people don't understand. One of the designers went on to create a whole collection for Malin, making a shirt with a silky inside that's easier to slip over her head, a dress with a strap at the bottom that Malin tugs on with her foot to pull the hem down. Malin was so inspired, she now helps run Open Style Lab with Grace Jun as a volunteer. Welcome, welcome. NewsHour Weekend followed Open Style Lab's 10-week summer program from day one to see how it works. Lack of accessible clothing is a barrier to greater independence. And the participants were divided into teams. Each has a designer and an engineer. I want you to hold it all the way in your palm. Plus, there's an occupational or physical therapist. So palm up. They worked with residents of the Riverside Premier Rehabilitation and Healing Center in Manhattan. The first task, getting to know the residents' needs. Sweater type material is hard to put on because it's bulky. Roxine Gazette had a stroke and is working to regain the use of her right arm. I like to use it again and I don't use it at all. Being unable to dress oneself is a big part of the lost independence that disability can cause. Roxy tells her team she gets frustrated waiting for an aide every morning to come help her get dressed. And so we're going to find a piece of clothing that she's going to be able to get on independently without assistance from her caregiver. I get them up. Yeah. I get the pants up. Ada Stewart has severe rheumatoid arthritis. Her team learned that it took her a full eight minutes to pull on a pair of sweatpants. Sometimes both of them go in the same leg and I can say, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> so they set about engineering something easier for her to put on. Another rehab resident, Wanda Rosario, has Parkinson's disease. She gets cold easily and has pain and weakness in her arms. It's so hard to find. Wanda loves music and singing, and she told her team her favorite memory was once performing at Amateur Night at the Apollo. So they decided to create a rock and roll leather jacket that she could put on over her head, which is less painful than pulling on from behind. Crew next to me kind of big enough for her to easily slide overhead, particularly her bun. It would have to be pretty wide, it'd be almost a boat neck at that point. Okay. The teams must rethink typical garment construction, everything from design to materials. Roxy's team is trying to figure out how to make a wrap dress that she can put on using only one arm. And the arm through the sleeve. And the arm through the sleeve. Roxy typically required a lot of help getting dressed, but she managed to pull on a prototype of this dress almost completely by herself. 
For people with paralysis or limited dexterity, fasteners like buttons or zippers can be difficult. Roxy's team tried magnets, but it turned out they didn't work that well either. It was sticking to the wheelchair, and so it made it difficult to maneuver the garment, and so we had to eliminate that. Fabric choice is important too. Many of the teams use wool, which is natural and breathable. Wanda's team discovered the synthetic vinyl they first tried didn't work. The vinyl was too stiff. It created these very um, unesthetic wrinkles and lines and creases. So they switched to lambskin, which didn't wrinkle as much. And they created a guide within the jacket to show Wanda how to put it on. So blue is for your arms and pink is for your head. The teams visited the clients regularly to test out the garments and make sure they fit. How does that feel? I don't know, like it's too tight. As the summer went on, Ada Stewart's outfit slowly took shape. The team tested different types of pleats for the pants and devised a pulley system that will gather up the pants for her, making it easier to get her feet in. Nice and warm. Look at them pockets. Ada's hands get cold, so the team placed the pockets on her lap, where her hands naturally lay. She told her team she wanted to get rid of her wheelchair one day, so they developed sensors that light up to remind her when it's time to exercise and give her feedback during the workout. I love it. I love it. It's going to be good. In addition to providing independence, confidence, and dignity, apparel can impact a person's job prospects. According to the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics, fewer than 20 percent of people with disabilities are employed. You don't have the same access. And a lack of appropriate clothing can be a barrier, according to Carrie McBee Black, a professor of textile and apparel management at the University of Missouri. Certain companies, certain corporations will have specific dress codes, requirements in terms of how you, you know, present yourself to the public, so to speak. And that can be a restriction for people living with a disability. McBee Black studies how clothing affects the social participation of people with disabilities. She says it can be difficult to find business attire, uniforms, and even coats and gloves that might be required for a job. And if someone does manage to find the right clothes, they might not be able to get in and out of them by themselves. It forces you into a situation where you're not able to live independently. McBee Black says that while the industry has largely ignored the community's needs, things are slowly starting to change. It's to remember that your disability is an honor, not a burden. In 2016, Tommy Hilfiger became the first major fashion designer to launch a line for people with disabilities. He says for him, it's personal. I learned through uh, having uh, children with special needs that autistic children sometimes don't necessarily have the dexterity to button buttons and zipper zippers. And we are very well aware of the fact that uh, wearing something great affects your self-esteem. The line is called Tommy Adaptive, and it includes pieces for children and adults. What is great about this is you don't have to worry about buttoning the button. You don't have to worry about zipping zip the zipper, magnet, and Velcro. This is a, an example of like a men's shirt, magnetized. It's the same quality, it's the same fabric, and same design as we offer to everyone else. Was this a risk for you as a company to take this on? Look, everything is a risk. I mean, if you're developing product, you never know if it's going to sell or not. A lot of designers who just want to have a cool brand leave a lot of people out. I never wanted to be that brand. We can really help Others are stepping up too. Last year, Target's Cat and Jack clothing. children's line began offering adaptive clothing that's also sensory friendly. No uncomfortable tags or rough seams that could bother a child with a sensory processing issue. It's the type of progress Open Style Lab is pushing for. There's a huge consumer set that has just been ignored. It just makes sense for brands to care. In mid-August, with just a few days to go, the teams were busy finishing up their pieces for the final showcase where they would present their work. On the day of the big event, the residents of Riverside Rehabilitation traveled to Parsons in their new garments. Roxy Gazette in her wrap dress. Hi, thank you. Ada Stewart in her jumpsuit. Ada, you look so good! This is the most, oh the goodness. best. And Wanda Rosario in her rock and roll jacket. Thank you. Thank you. The teams presented to a packed room and celebrated their accomplishments, creating clothes that were fashionable and functional.
raising awareness about the importance of inclusivity and bringing the joy of style to everyone.